line 0898555620 to find out what's happening in this famous Yorkshire Dale. But remember to dial the 0898 code first. Now there's pandemonium at the golf club when a newspaper reveals how the club members have been relaxing. Straight down the middle It went straight down the middle Then it started a hook just a wee wee bit That's when my caddy lost sight of it That little white pellet has never been found to this day But it went straight down the middle Far away Mr. Secretary, have you seen the local paper? Yeah, I haven't got time for reading, have I? They've nicked the lead off the roof again. <laughs> now, before you start work, I want an estimate. An, es an estimate. Alexander. Have you seen the local paper, Mr. Secretary? I don't have time for reading the newspaper, Stuart, and you shouldn't have time either. I think you'd better read it this week. I have enough problems with that section of the community that uses this club without bothering about the antics of the rest of them. Club axed after sex expose. That's, that's disgusting. <laughs> I don't want to read that kind of rubbish. I mean, that's gutter press. A seedy well, I mean... massage parlour at a top Princess Hill hotel is being closed after Princess Hill Gazette investigation into sex for sale sessions. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in every barrel there's rotten apples. Uh, well, I must say I'm surprised at that sort of behaviour around here. Following a three-month investigation into so-called massage sessions... Hmm. Yeah, just keep your voice down, please. Remember where you are. There's ladies. Uh, they've all heard it, I bet. In the Executive Health Club at the Old Red Barn Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> the Old Red Barn Hotel. Yeah. I don't believe it. There you are, look, look. The Old Red Barn Hotel, where the elite meet to eat. <laughs> the Gazette confronted the owners, Colonel and Mrs. Fred Westry, on Wednesday. Colonel Westray? Mm -hmm. well. No. Colonel Westray? Yes. <laughs> Colonel Westray? I don't believe it. And his good lady wife? Impossible. <laughs> He's on the committee here, isn't yeah, he? I know. I know. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, respectable, honest, decent chap he is. <laughs> or well, so he'd like us all to think, eh, Mr. Secretary? Oh, reading about our sex scandal, Secretary? See old Fred Westray's for it. They're closing this place down. Sly old dog, eh, Tom? Yeah, I thought it was a mistake. There must be a mistake. No mistake. He left to resign from the committee, and he was being put forward as vice-captain, too. Vice-captain? That's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Big quiet. <laughs> Let's say it. Following our revelations, the council licensed hotel with the motto, Your Pleasure is Our Business, <laughs> is being stripped of its AA two-star rating. An AA spokesman said it is no longer an AA-listed hotel as it no longer meets our requirements for a two-star <laughs> listing. <laughs> well, what sort of sex do you have to provide to get a two-star listing? Willis, Willis, Mr. Willis, please. A blonde woman in her 30s who called herself Charlie oh, offered a member of the Gazette staff three types of sexual services, oh, dear. which she called the three steps to heaven. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Charlie, oh. The chatty masseurs said the parlour was very popular with the local people, mm -hmm. and particularly certain golf club members who came in regularly for saucy follicks inside the small, dimly lit cubicle. Oh, yeah, I, that, that's, that's libel. This will make your hair curl, Mr. Secretary. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have got up this morning. <laughs> Another attractive girl known as Miranda, who drives a BMW, told of making £200 a night from an amazing series of five-minute transactions with men from the cocktail bar waiting to go into dinner with their wives. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what, these things. what kind of a man would do that up with his wife? Ah, yeah. uh, ladies, and how are we today? So, you're reading all about some of the gentlemen who frequent this club? Disgusting. No. I thought, oh, I thought I've just had you brought to my notice. As if you didn't know, I suppose. No, Men. 
animals, I prefer to call them. Oh, don't be lying, poor damn animals, Betsy. <laughs> the beast of the field has more dignity. I bet she's never lived on a farm. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Bennett. Uh, nothing. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Drawing such unsavoury notoriety to the club and a decent, respectable neighbourhood. Not me, ladies. I'm innocent. I hope you're going to do something about this, Secretary. Yeah, well, naturally. I mean, uh, the committee will... We'll all uh... be involved, from what I know of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies, but as Secretary of this club, I cannot allow an insinuation of this nature to go unchallenged. This is a decent, respectable club, and most of its gentlemen members are... are... the subject of lewd allegations from that rag you have there. They didn't do me stop for a drink. Why is it always the ugly, arid, bone-dry, sexless ones that are most outraged by it? You leave the president's wife out of this. <laughs> hey, we had our last club dinner and dance here, Mr. Secretary. <laughs> so, so what? Most of the townspeople use that for their, for their functions and that. Yeah, well, it's a very popular place. Well, I'm not surprised. What with Denise, Sharon and Charlie putting in about that of his tomorrow? <laughs> You're jumping to conclusions. That's just paper talk. Stuart, another large one. What's she like, Secretary? What Charlie? That Charlie. That's Willis. Her in the paper. Oh, yeah, I don't know her. You were with her all night, the last dinner and dance. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know her. Well, the photographer took pictures of you dancing with her with your nose stuck down the front of her dress. <laughs> I won the ball for a week. Have you seen this rag? Yes. Another large one in this. Swine Brooks. I shall never play golf with him again. He shall be drummed out of the club. Oh, of course. He's a member here, isn't he? Who? Oh. Brooks. Harry Brooks. The editor of the Gazette. Woodley's friend. Well, he's no friend of mine after this. This is a pernicious invasion of privacy. Of course. The girl in the BMW. Yes. Uh, don't you take that tone with me, Bennett. Keep your tasteless remarks to yourself. Otherwise, you might find yourself on the receiving end of a letter from my solicitors. It's not me you want to worry about, old son. It's your friend Brooks. He's the muckraker. Uh, what sort of person wants to read this kind of muck? Well, you normally. <laughs> uh, here comes Mr. Brooks now, sir. Drinks all round, uh, Stuart. Uh, ah, <laughs> reading my scoop, I see. Wonderful story. Sorry the club had to be mentioned. <laughs> it's a wonder to me you've got the brass to walk into this club, Brooks, after printing this filth. That's what my readers want. It's muck. You're quite right, it is muck. Scandalous drivel, but it sells the paper. I'd rather publish poetry, but nobody will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> not in here, not with your overalls on. <laughs> You'll be sorry for this. Oh, I don't think so. We've already been offered syndication for it. You mean the Nationals? Oh, yeah. The Sun, the Mirror, the Mail, the Star, the Express, they all want it. <laughs> it's all the rags. Yes. All the papers everybody reads. Oh, my God, we'll be pilloried throughout the nation. You speak for yourself. I'm innocent. Thank God I never went near that place. Uh, so you say. <laughs> I'm a happily married man. I don't need to go to those sort of places. <laughs> I'm a happily married man. <laughs> you were a happily married man. Blimey, when this lot blows through the nationals, I'd hate to be in your shoes when Daphne finds out about the girl with the BMW. Oh. But Daphne, Daphne doesn't read the yellow press. I wouldn't bet on it, old son. Stop calling me old son. Listen, if she doesn't read it for herself, surely you must have some kindly neighbour or some old devoted friend who loves you both so much that she'll feel compelled to tell dear Daphne what the nasty newspapers are saying about her dear husband. Will you shut up, Bennett? <laughs> I'm not thinking of myself, I'm thinking of the good name of this club. Oh, Miss Riot, the scandal, the fact that he is callous, cold-blooded, swinish, money-grubbing associate should drag decent, respectable people through, through the mud of calumny and slander to satisfy their vicarious attitude and... Oh, my God, Daphne will kill me. <laughs> Hey, there's no mention.
mention of you in the paper? Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there should be. No, why should there be? I've, I've never been there. I, I couldn't afford the uh, the Colonel's prices. I mean, whatever they are. No, I've, I've never been there. I'm always at home with the television. Um, to, uh, old stick in the mud, definitely. me. I'm sure you call that an estimate. If it's not one thing, it's another. Estimate. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Look, that's all for putting a picture of that on the roof. No bigger than the bedspread. I mean, ah, look at that S. I, mean, I can build a new clubhouse for that. But Colonel Westray is any other bar. Ah, uh, secretary. Uh. <laughs> certain rumours about Miss Secretary. If you haven't, you probably will do. You know what people are. And uh, there's uh, something in the papers, I believe. But I can tell you now, without a word of a lie, as one gentleman to another, there isn't a jot of truth in them. Oh, I never, I never thought there was, sir. <laughs> I have arranged a certain uh, uh, amenities for... Uh, certain people, not for myself, you understand, but by popular request for uh, others, so to speak. Well, don't be secretary. I'm not the type of person to deal in that sort of thing. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> what sort of thing, sir? <laughs> what sort of thing is they're saying, these rumours, whatever they are. I mean, I'm a respected man, a, a, a pillar of society. I'm... Uh, uh, irreproachable. Um, impeachable. Yes. I always dip in my hand in my pocket, giving to this or that charitable movement. I'm very generous. Person to look up to. Always have been. I mean, I don't say these things about myself. Others say it. Yeah, I say it, sir. You're not <laughs> the only one. And I'm not the only one. <laughs> now we get this then. All this filthy muck reeking by the press and the police. Hmm? Who's it going to benefit, eh? Who's it going to help? Nobody. Why can't the police mind their own damn business? Yeah, I imagine so. They thought it was their business. And I <laughs> swine Brooks on the Gazette. I offered him money to suppress his filthy story. I don't expect people to do things for nothing. Well, Not for me. I'm willing to pay. pay. Told him that. I told the inspector that. <laughs> There's no way I'd let either of them be a loser. Scratch my back and I'll scratch That's yours. Cool. That's my philosophy. Well, what do these fellows know about philosophy, huh? Oh, uh, not, nothing. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> and as for our fine, feathered friends on the council, well, we've discovered how far their loyalty stretches. Fine friends they've turned out oh. to be, eh? All the booze and girls and free lunches they've had, too. And money. Oh. Yes, money, money. Oh. I know. <laughs> I can rely on you, Secretary to speak up for me and rally the member round. Rally the members? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Get up a petition, get him to sign it, hmm? We'll fight this thing, Secretary. Together we'll ram their filthy rumours back down their throat. Do you think that, do you think that's wise, sir? Wise? Yeah, don't you think it's better for all concerned if, if, <laughs> if you were to sort of resign, sir? <laughs> for myself, Secretary. I'm doing it for the honour of the club. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm the best chairman this club's ever had. Look at what I've given. Look, look, look. the Westray Cup, the Westray, Cup. The Westray Trophy, oh, the man. Westray Putter, the Westray Silver Salver, the Westray Winter Four Ball Scratch Trophy, the Westray Mixed Fossils. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there I go. There you go. I subsidised all that, don't forget. And that's my silver. Right in love. <laughs> <laughs> I've earned this. <laughs> Yeah.
So you think you can keep my name out of it? Oh, I don't see why not. <coughs> of course, I never knew the girl, not, not really. I've spoken to the inspector, and he said there's no reason to mention any golf club members. Oh. He's got over his grievances, has he? The inspector? Oh, yeah, storm in a teacup. Oh, let's take the patrol car away from the club. No problem. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a relief. What was the aggro? Did you find out? <coughs> The secretary. Oh. <laughs> An idiot. Yeah, yeah. Just, we just have to get rid of him. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> with the kind of money we're paying him, what other type of bloke can we hope to attract? Oh, he's a, an oof. A shabby, down at heel oof. How did he upset the inspector? He insisted that the police section pay entrance to the Westray Cup. Yes, but all members pay entrance to that. Yes, I know, but we do enjoy certain police facilities. One good turn deserves another, eh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and our poor old thicky secretary hadn't the brains to work that one out. <laughs> the inspector thought it was the colonel getting a bit umpty. So they had a few words, and the colonel, being the colonel, gets up on his high horse. And the upshot of it all is that a party of the inspector's men are in ye old red barn having a bit of a rave up, and the colonel presents them with a bill. What, he gave the, he gave the police a bill? <laughs> a bill for the bill. <laughs> <laughs> and worse, he makes them pay it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear it is. So the inspector raids the old red barn and discovers, to his great surprise, carnal goings-on that he's known about since the bloody place opened. Well, I've no brief for the uh, old colonel. I mean, he's a twerp. He'll just have to resign. Yeah. But who do you put in his place? Do you have any Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gentlemen, committee meeting. <laughs> Oh, dear old secretary. <laughs> we all choose the members of Princess Hill Golf Club. We choose the committee. We didn't choose our present chairman very well, did we? Yeah. We go to all that trouble to make sure we have an upright member as chairman, Colonel Westray. A good name, a church warden, good character. We end up with a porn merchant. Yeah. <laughs> Objection sustained. Objection sustained. <laughs> sustained. It was defamatory and uncalled for. What are you talking about, defamatory and uncalled for? Order, order. I'm still chairman of this club, and I order those last remarks to be struck from the minutes. Oh, yeah, well, no. There's a ruling on that. <laughs> I thought there would be. Ah, yes, yes. The outgoing chairman... Who's outgoing? Uh, is the president. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is all very distressing. Why did you have to let all this happen, Fred? Oh, don't blame me. Don't hold me responsible for the carnal desires of members of this club. And I didn't blame it all to the press, either. What's done is done now, Fred, and I feel that we should try and conduct this meeting in as friendly a fashion as possible. Uh, Captain, Captain, don't waffle. Look, are we trying to get shot of him or not? Yes, Bennett, but there are ways of doing things. I wouldn't expect you to understand that. Look, Captain, I'm not on trial here. Neither is Fred. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Captain, you have the flair for this kind of thing. What's the nice way to tell Fred that we don't want him as chairman anymore? Uh, and we don't want him as a member either. And the sooner he resigns and clears off, the better. What? Resign as chairman? Well, it might be best, Fred. And leave the club? Uh, yes, of course. But no hard feelings, obviously. Yeah, I'm <laughs> the silver. The uh, secretary had some thoughts about the silver. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, the West Ray Cup. <laughs> the committee would like to have something to remember you by, sir. I don't want anything to remember him by. We're trying to get rid of him because his name is mud. I don't see why we should have it splattered all over one of our trophies. Yeah, it's going to be renamed. What? Huh? Oh, now, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, may I continue, Mr. Bennett? We're going to rename it the President's Trophy. Oh, why can't it remain the West Drake Cup? Well, it could, of course, without doubt, under different circumstances. Yeah, but as, as you're moving your way from, from Princess Hill and changing your name and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing my name. <laughs> Changing your name, well, wouldn't it be a good idea if you did so? <laughs> I mean, 
Leave all this behind. Leave all what behind? <laughs> I've done nothing. You were caught running a dodgy massage parlor. <laughs> I run them properly. <laughs> Me running them if people like you had been more discreet. Yeah, if I may continue, the, the Westray Salvo to be known. I left strict instructions to run them properly. As this captive Salvo. No hanky panky, I it. told them. I don't want those sort of clients, I told them. I told the girls I don't want that sort of thing going on. Not on my premises. Dirty little sluts. <laughs> anyway, who was it used the girls, eh? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> well, no idea. I mean, we have no knowledge. You want names? No, no, be careful. Now, don't add libel and slander to all your other troubles. It's all right, gentlemen. There aren't any names. The Gazette investigated. There were no names. I gave you names. I gave the Gazette names. You wouldn't print them. Names? <laughs> I hope you haven't given them my name. The police said there were no names. No names with any evidence attached to them. I've got them here. I'll read them out. <laughs> I'm going to phone my solicitor. Would you sit down? I'm not going to stand here and have my name blackened by this twine. Careful, careful. If the cat fits. Don't you be so innocent, Bennett. What about you and Sharon, yes? What about you oh. and Sharon? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? What about the cottage on Dykes Common near the cops with the roses round the door and the wisteria going up the wall? Say a more. Sharon didn't live there on her own, did she, Bennett? Sharon lived there with the girl in the BMW! Oh. <laughs> I think the little hornetsness was stirring up here. I think you're lucky to have got off so lightly, Fred. Yeah. Lightly, is it? Yes, I, I would have said lightly. Well, you won't get the silver. You're not having the silver. No, no, no. I'm taking my silver. Secretary? <laughs> now, brave. Anyone who tries to stop it. Stop it, Mr. Secretary. Uh, 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 Colonel. Open the door. Yes, yeah, It's all right, gentlemen. The Gazette will replace everything. Oh, well done, Brooksy. Well, thank you, Mr. Brooks. Uh, gentlemen, as we're all assembled here, I suggest we elect a new chairman, and I propose Mr. Brooks. Well, oh, thank you very much. All in favour, say aye. 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 Motion carried. That's, that's a moment. Oh, just a minute. I mean, this is not a correct proceeding. He hasn't been seconded or anything. I second. Uh, all in favour, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, if there isn't any other business, Mr. Secretary, I propose we all adjourn to the bar. Drinks all round on the Gazette. Oh, well done. Well done, Harry. Well done, Harry. Well done, Harry. Dear Mrs. Woodley, ask your husband about the girl in the BMW. <laughs> and the cottage with roses round the front door. Signed, a friend. <laughs> well, uh, Next time he's shirty with me, I'll put that in a post. Oh. Uh -huh.